Okay, um, a very warm welcome to all the audience. Uh, today we have uh, Professor Dr. Atawla Shah joining us, uh, who is a leading researcher, educator, and practitioner with 33 years of executive level diverse experience in the fields of academic leadership, project design, and management, teaching and research, public connectivity, and high performance team in higher education across public and private sectors. Besides PhD, Professor Shah uh, has uh, uh, MPhil in economics and uh, MBA and MS in environmental design with a couple of postgraduate diplomas. He has authored more than 45 articles and has or authored more than uh, six books uh, on diverse areas, for example, civil engineering, project management, environmental sustainability, disaster management, international relations. His current research focus is on academic and research leadership, project risk management, sustainability in built environment, project management and academic leadership. He's fellow and vice chairman institution of engineers, Pakistan, member National Technology Council, member Senate Pakistan Institute of Development Economics and life member Pakistan Engineering Council. And is working as editorial board members of a couple of renowned international journals. He has been involved in the research projects on climate changes, water resource management, land use changes, low cost housing technology, enabled quality higher education and sustainable development. He has developed unmatching teaching, research and entrepreneurship opportunities for the youth of the uh, Gilgit Baltistan region. He has formerly worked as a vice chancellor City University of Science and Technology, Peshawar, and is, has worked as a director of projects planning at Lamaibara University. Professor Shah is currently working as a vice chancellor at Karakoram International University, Gilgit, Pakistan, and he'll be discussing today about the impacts of spatio-temporal changes of glaciers on the water resources of Hindukush, Karakoram, Himalayas region. So over to you, sir, and thanks for joining. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Irfan and all the uh, colleagues. Uh, I really feel uh, very honored to be part of this very visionary and uh, wisdom-filled uh, 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 people. Uh, I think the uh, Indus water and the HKH region, we call it Hindu Kush Himalaya, and sometimes we call it Hindu Kush Karakuram in Himalayas, uh, is uh, home to the world largest glaciers uh, one way or the other way. And besides the two poles, north and south, we normally call it the third pole. This is also called as a water towers. Uh, it provides about 50 to 60 percent water to the uh, basins. Uh, there are 10 uh, major basins, and Indus Basin is one of them, uh, which is getting almost 70 or 60 percent of water from the melting of these glaciers, uh, which are located in this region. Uh, in the last couple of years, uh, uh, when I'm here for Vice Chancellor uh, for the last four years, uh, I could see that uh, there is a lot of uh, changes happening in the uh, glacial masses and uh, particularly the uh, formation of new glacial lakes is uh, coming up. Uh, they are increasing not only in number, but also uh, the extent in the area of these glaciers is also increasing. And that is a matter of great concern. Uh, you could see uh, that uh, just a week or uh, two weeks, we had a catastrophe of the Sheshpur uh, Lake uh, outburst a phenomena in which the Sheshpur uh, Glacier uh, which has surged for almost 13 kilometers towards the KKH, uh, then could all of a sudden due to the climate change could burst and a high, huge uh, debris flow uh, could go to the Hassanabad. And I'll show uh, some of the pictures with you that how the devastation has been caused, uh, have been caused by this uh, uh, debris flow. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, fields have been inundated and uh, the uh, the uh, Ibadat Khanas and the shops and the uh, powerhouses have been damaged by these floods, uh, debris floods. So uh, this is a growing uh, phenomenon now. And apart from this, uh, this is not only in the Shishpur, even we could see in this the Emmet and uh, last year in the Bertswad and even this year we had the second episode of the burst, outburst floods. So KIV is working very closely uh, with the GLAV2 project uh, which is sponsored by the UNDP under the Climate Change Fund, 
uh, a global cha climate change fund, and we are trying to see uh, in the 17 highly vulnerable valleys of Gilgit Baltistan uh, to see that how can we assess the vulnerability, uh, the multi hazard vulnerability of these uh, uh, valleys, and then based on that, we can develop some uh, response strategies with the GB government and uh, develop the various scenarios under which the uh, different kinds of, uh, uh, of these disasters can happen. And we are also trying to document the knowledge uh, repository which is uh, having with the people uh, about the disaster management. So these are the three areas uh, which we are working for the last three uh, years almost with the, the GLAV2 project. Uh, this talk is mainly a review uh, of what is happening around us in the uh, HKH region, and uh, we will see that uh, uh, there is a lot of alarming situation now in the HKH region regarding the climate change and its impact on the water resources. Uh, certainly, the uh, climate change uh, is a phenomena which is not uh, in the control of, of uh, people uh, here, uh, but we are at the forefront of the uh, of the uh, disasters of the climate change and we are Pakistan is uh, uh, seventh among the top 10 highly vulnerable countries to the climate change impacts and I, when we say Pakistan I think at the top of everything we have the Gilgit Baltistan where the uh, climate change is severely impacting the uh, ground temperature and the melting of glaciers so this is just telling us the uh, the HKH region and uh, you can see uh, that these are the and more important, most important basins uh, in the Hindu Kush, we have the uh, Burma Putra and then we have Indus and Ganges, uh, Ganga. Uh, these are some of the very important uh, 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 basins which are really very important for the livelihood of the people uh, in these uh, maybe 11 or 12 countries. Next. Uh, Irfan, next. Is it, is it going on? Uh, it is second slide. HKH region continued. Uh, we can see. Yes, that, that is just. Uh, yes, this is just telling. Uh, I, I think it's not uploading here. Uh, that is HKH regions and its septic significance. I think it's it's visible uh, to the audience, but I think the next slide is not visible. Uh, should I start from mine? Because it should be visible also to the audience. Yeah, audience can see it. OK, so then, then I think we have some. I, I, I'll then upload mine here. Yeah, I think there might be some uh, connectivity problems. Is we all uh, Yes, OK, sir, you can share it. I will stop my sharing. OK, so. Uh, <clears throat> Now we are going to uh, slide number four, is it? That is HKH region. Uh, uh, I think you might, the screen, you might have. At the screen, we are just looking at the map of the HKH region or in the uh, uh, different basins. Uh, but I'm uh, not sir, sure. Let me share, share your presentation. presentation. Share presentation from there. Yeah. So, I think it's, it will yep. be better. Yep. Benazir, you un unshare kare. Yes, all, yes, sir. Man, unshare kar liye. You have already done that. Can you see the slides now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. So I don't see it now. <laughs> OK, let me upload from my computers. Uh, it's OK, it happens sometimes. <laughs> OK. So uh, is it visible? I think the uh, fourth uh, slide is now visible, and that is the uh, significance of this HKH region. Is it visible that way from? Yes, please. We are, I so I just discussed that uh, the uh, glaciers of the regions are uh, the third largest in uh, the world and they are called uh, 
third pool and uh, they have 2700 cubic kilometers of ice uh, and then we have 10 important uh, basins here uh, it's stretching across uh, 11 or 10 countries uh, 3500 kilometers and the the three very important uh, basins which are in this Ganges and Bamaputra and uh, that is catering for something like 1.3 billion people uh, in the region. Next, can you see the next one? Glacial dynamics, is it visible? No, sir. In front, is it visible? The next no, slide sir. is with. OK. Yeah, now it's visible. It has yeah. visible now. Uh, this yes. is just telling us how uh, the glacial mass or the glacier number of glaciers are increasing. For example, uh, one of the study uh, tells us that in the central Karakoram National Park, uh, the uh, uh, 608 glaciers have been reported uh, with 202 glacial lakes. And uh, the glaciers in Hulza uh, in Karakoram region have been receded by uh, 4.1% to 10.63% during 77 and 2014. Uh, this is done uh, by Shafiq as uh, in his study in 2018. Uh, there are uh, in Hindu Kush Karakura region, there are 2420 glacial lakes have been reported in which 52 have been declared as the most uh, potential to outburst. And uh, out of these 52, uh, something like 17 or 16 are highly vulnerable. And one of them was this uh, this Sheshpur, which outbursted a couple of days back. I mean, we go to the Pamir in the Kush region, uh, which is Pamir in the Kush and Karakurams. Uh, we uh, see that there are uh, 4,602 and 49815701 glacier uh, lakes. This is just telling us that how the number of glacial lakes have been increasing in the last uh, 30 or uh, uh, 40 years since 1990 to 2010. And you can just uh, figure out the numbers that from 4,600s, these glacial lakes have increased to something like 5700s in the last 30 years. Uh, this study uh, is very significant to tell us that what is happening to the uh, glacial mass in this region. Uh, this is another study which was done by EC mode in uh, 2015, uh, which is uh, telling us again the uh, various kinds of uh, glaciers uh, in different basins. Uh, for example, in Pakistan, again, they have reported 5000 plus uh, glaciers, which is having an area of 15,000 square kilometers, and there are 2,420, something like only 400 uh, uh, glacial lakes, and out of these are again uh, 52 are uh, vulnerable, and out of 52, 16 or 15 are very highly, uh, highly vulnerable. So based on uh, this study, uh, you can see that uh, there are 11,000 uh, glaciers in this uh, in the Kush Pamirs and uh, Himalayas region, and out of it, uh, at least 165 are, are uh, vulnerable to the uh, lakes, are vulnerable to the outburst floods. Uh, then uh, if we look at the, uh, in the Himalayan side, in the Nepal Himalaya, uh, we can see that again, uh, the number of glacial lakes have been increasing. For instance, in, uh, in 1977, uh, 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 it was something like 606, uh, in number having a 55 uh, square kilometer of extent, which have been increased to 1541, uh, more than uh, uh, two and a half times. And uh, the area has also increased from 55 square kilometers to 80 square kilometers, which again is uh, very alarming even in the Himalayas. In the Himalayas, uh, in the, at least in the Western Himalayas, it is, ex it is afraid that if this melting uh, continue, maybe by 2050, we uh, we uh, we are uh, left with no low level glaciers uh, in the Western Himalayas, and that will be the matter of high concern for the people of Nepal and India. Uh, similarly, the uh, lakes in Goshi, Kandaki, and Karnali river basins have increased uh, in the meanwhile, and this is uh, something like about 25 percent in extent in number. Now, looking that. Uh, uh, the number is increasing, the extent or the geographical extent of the glacial lakes is increasing, and that is creating a very highly uh, high alarming situation for the people of HKH region. Uh, 
uh, particularly the communities who are living in the foothills of these basins, uh, they are really very vulnerable. And we could see one of the episodes in uh, uh, in, in, in Shishpur, Hassanabad, Hunza, and then also in Emmet, uh, in, uh, in Batshwa. In the Indian side, uh, again, we have the same phenomena. Uh, total of 25, uh, 251 glacial lakes exist, uh, in which uh, there are 45 lakes, uh, and 12 lakes were considered critical, uh, and they need further investigation. 93 lakes were reported potentially critical, and 101 were deemed to have no glove threats. Out of the uh, 12 critical lakes, two are located in Jammu and Kashmir, two in Himachal Pradesh, and uh, eight in Sikkim uh, that uh, that was reported with rifle. 65% uh, of the monsoon influenced glaciers are retreating due to climate change. So this is uh, one of the very disastrous phenomena happening around the HKH region, and the number of the glacial lakes are uh, are increasing, and their uh, areas also increasing. Now, when we come to the uh, the second part, that how the water uh, water uh, will be affected or the water resources will be affected by these glacier melts and uh, formation of the uh, of the uh, glacial lakes uh, there are a couple of studies uh, and modeling uh, which are taking into account the various uh, climate scenarios and based on these climate scenarios uh, climate change scenarios they're trying to see that what will be the melt rate and if the melt rate is uh, uh, x then what can be the uh, uh, water volume flowing in uh, the different basins, and how how uh, would be the impact of this uh, climate change and the glacial dynamics on the water resources? Uh, it is generally believed that uh, uh, by 2050, uh, a, a large number of the low altitude glacier will be built, in, and that would mean that we could have uh, in the first uh, uh, part of the next century, maybe uh, uh, we can have a high level of uh, uh, floods in the uh, plains and uh, excessive water will be available in the plains that would uh, definitely uh, devastate the people in the plain and uh, uh, we can uh, expect a high uh, level of floods in the region. And then uh, after 50 years or so, uh, that would be followed by the uh, high uh, level of drought and the water uh, will be reduced uh, maybe by one third or uh, half uh, in the uh, in the basins, and that would be a very uh, very alarming situation because the per capita water availability in the region is already one of the lowest. If you just look at the figures, uh, when Pakistan was uh, was established back in 1947, the per capita availability of water was something like 100 uh, 1,000 cubic uh, meter, which has reduced significantly now to something like 500 or uh, or 600 uh, per capita. So this uh, is a very alarming situation, and if uh, the uh, further drought happens, then the uh, the water uh, availability per capita would go down substantially, and that would be very uh, catastrophic for the region. Uh, so most of the water uh, in these basin are coming from glacier melts, with different proportions ranging from 13% in the upper Brahmaputra, 16 in Ganges, and 41% uh, uh, in Indus Basin. The lake of Kohen scientific data and regional cooperation impede the quantity of the quantify the impacts of glacier melting on variability or availability of the surface water and groundwater, because uh, these uh, basins are having the cross boundary problems and the cross cross boundary conflicts, cross boundary contracts uh, conflicts are happening in this region, and that is making very difficult to see that how can we assess and model the availability of water from these melts. There are some assumptions, there are some uh, models which are trying to assess the volume of water, maybe based on the uh, on the maps from the satellite mapping, but still uh, the uh, the ground truth is not uh, available to greater extent. And that is one of the biggest impediment to to uh, to map and to uh, to really assess the availability of water in these uh, in these uh, basins. We are working uh, with the Institute of Space Technology and we are using the artificial intelligence techniques to see the availability of water based on the modern techniques uh, of the GS mapping. The interaction between glacial retreat and groundwater recharge is also not well understood and the transboundary issues for the shared water management are challenges to effective water management in the region. And that is one of the biggest challenge in the uh, Indus Basin as well. 
A rigorous research in climate modeling is also recommended in the upper reaches of HKH region to quantify the impacts of glacial retreat on variability of water in the basins. The study of glacial mass changes in the HKH region and increased melting in recent years led to rising river flows in Shigar, Hunza, and Rizar, and even uh, we could see this in the last episodes. The recent glove event in Asanabad, Shishpur Glacier, and subsequent high flow in river devastated the physical infrastructure, including bridge, powerhouse, houses of the people, farmland, uh, about the, uh, uh, I mean the uh, worship places, and the protection work. Increase in the flow of uh, at least first half of the 21st century based on the assumptions relating to the reference climate data set being used. So it is expected in the first uh, half of the next century, of this century, we will have towards the mid of this century, we will have a high flood situation in the uh, in the basins, uh, and then that would be followed by drought, as I've already submitted. The large spread of uh, precipitation during 21st century is expected to provide water availability in the range of maybe minus 15% or plus 60% to the baseline during 1971 to 2000, the increase in precipitation tends to increase the area of glacial lakes, which will change the pattern of surface water flows in groundwater. So this is another uh, problem uh, that uh, sometimes we believe that monsoon is now even extended, extending to uh, to the Gilgit Baltistan, and the kind of uh, precipitation we have this year is quite unprecedented. Uh, the rainfalls. So this would be another uh, very uh, big disaster when the uh, monsoon extend to this region and the number of uh, glacial lakes are increasing in extent. The climate change in rising temperature from uh, this is a modeling based study by Shurista that 0 0.7 to uh, 2.6 degrees Celsius over the period of 2039 and 2070 will increase the water in the Chitral Basin River that is uh, in the Kush. Uh, uh, that the uh, this will the water resource may decline due to melting of snow and glaciers on the basis of use of variety of climate production techniques under various scenarios a flood with high return period of 10 years now this is very very alarming that a high flood within 10 years every 10 years is will be expected with this high melting and we normally the return period is designed for 60 years and even 120 years but this uh, high melting may lead to a high flood return period of 10 years. That would mean that we will expect every 10 years a high flood in the region, which, will, which may be unprecedented, and that is very catastrophic. The climate change and its impact on the variability of water supply in the downstream and of the upper Indus Basin shows both shortages and oversupply during the year for next century, which will require to construct larger reservoirs for water storages. And this is one of the biggest problem with Pakistan that we couldn't construct uh, neither a big number of small dams nor uh, large dams. This government, no doubt, has been the previous government has been doing some very good mega projects like uh, we have the Dasu Dam here in the Dhamir Basha. But still, we need to have a large number of reservoirs uh, to store the water, which can be available in the next uh, couple of decades in, uh, due to high floods. In some parts of the HKH, like Himalaya basins, the decrease in water to the extent of 40% has been predicted during uh, 2010 and 2050, and that is the concern that maybe the lower Himalayas uh, glacier will be melted and maybe extended to uh, the extent that they would not be available for the water supply uh, beyond 2050. These basins are already facing severe water shortages in many parts and future uncertainty about the water availability can lead to serious droughts. That is the second phase that once we have high floods towards the middle of this century, maybe uh, then that would be followed by because the low level uh, uh, glacier would be melted by that and the climate change would not be uh, in a position to bring big number of uh, glacial uh, 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 glacial masses in the lower uh, part of the HKH region and that would be uh, one of the disasters in the form of droughts in the second part of this century. The water management and hazard mitigation system is hence the most compelling need of the HKH region in this context. This would require to study the relationship between the glacial melting, glacial mass balance, and contribution of seasonal and annual melting of the glaciers to total water flow in the major rivers of the HKH region. And these are some of the areas where we need to bring a very uh, coherent research in the region.
The spatial temporal variation in the hydrometeorological data of the uh, Kankai River Basin in East Nepal and Malayas showed declining trends in the surface water and groundwater due to expected increase in the temperature. The water availability in the basin will be highly variable in the downstream end. And that is already uh, a very challenge, a big challenge for us in the uh, in next uh, few decades. Now, the second part uh, is that what are the way out? I mean, uh, certainly, uh, as I have already submitted, that climate change is a phenomena uh, where Pakistan or the region may not be a big contributor uh, to the uh, to the uh, global warming and to the greenhouse gases uh, emissions uh, because we don't have a very big industry in this region. Uh, but still, uh, the impact of this climate change is much higher uh, than the rest of the world, and we are placed in the top 10 countries which are highly vulnerable to the climate changes. Now, this brings a lot of uh, responsibility to all of us, uh, being at academia and the governments and the society, uh, that, for, for example, uh, that the climate change will lead to serious impact on the hydrology and water availability in the region during the 21st century. And I, as I have already submitted, that in the first half of the 21st century, towards the mid of this century, uh, 2050 or 2060, we can expect a very high level of floods. Uh, and we have already witnessing this in uh, in Rizal, at least. Uh, there is a lot of high flood this year, and uh, a lot of erosion has been caused in, uh, in some part of the Rizal. Uh, where people have already migrated from the uh, uh, major part of the uh, river plains. Uh, and uh, then we can also see this year a very high, high flood in the Gilgit River and also in the Hunza River. Uh, so this is uh, already happening uh, even before the mid of the century. Uh, we are still in the one part, the first quarter of the century. We are, we are facing these episodes of the climate change and the high floods. Better monitoring through the data about important parameters like hydrometeorological data, measurement of glacial uh, mass balances, seasonal snow cover, uh, black carbon in snow and ice, uh, assessment of glow risk, stream flow data that is dis discharge, water quality, and demographic patterns of water use can be collected under such program. Now, uh, it's very unfortunate that not only the, the quantity of water is highly variable, uh, the quality is becoming another challenge uh, in this region. Uh, for example, we could uh, study the quality of water in the uh, garment projects. Uh, and let me tell you that all of the water samples we collected from around uh, 50 sites of the garment projects were having the E. coli, and they were not conforming to the WHO standard for the uh, clean drinking water. And none of them was free from the E. coli, the mic microbial contents. Uh, this is one of the projects we just concluded with the British Academy in Al Khan University, and it was funded by British Academy to about uh, 300,000 uh, pounds sterling project. Uh, so uh, we had a very, uh, uh, a very frustrating kind of results uh, from the government uh, projects which were used as a control projects. That most of these projects are having very poor management. The uh, power, the water distribution is becoming a challenge. Uh, the quality assurance is becoming a challenge. The availability is becoming a challenge. So in Gilgit, Baltistan, by and large, uh, particularly in the urban uh, areas, we are already facing the severe water uh, uh, problems. Uh, if if you visit Hunza during July and August, you would see a severe uh, water crisis. Uh, the high turbidity of water in the river water is not uh, in a position to use it, and the streams are highly turbid due to the uh, floods, and uh, the water becomes really a very rare commodity in Hunza. And even I could see last time that people were washing their hands and mouths with the with the uh, bottled water, and that is one of the, uh, the the one of the very high concern in this region. Even in Karakoram University. I think the most uh, uh, the most uh, dear and the most uh, rare uh, commodity with us is the water because we uh, bring the water down from 300 feet uh, through the pumping system. And when the high flood is there, the, the high turbidity of this water is creating a lot of issues uh, in use as well as in pumping. And every six months, the pump is uh, somehow burnt due to the high salt level. We are now trying to bring the uh, solutions like deep wells and the deep sumps so that we can have the filtered water uh, for. On the supply side uh, strategies, there is a need to improve the storage capacity at the downstream end, of which we will need to improve the water supply forecasting 
enhanced dams and catchment systems. In this context, the construction of small dams and catchment system may provide more useful alternatives. The construction of large water reservoir involved many national and international challenges. So I think uh, it's high time for Pakistan and for the people of this region, HKH region, that we should focus on construction of small dams, check dams, uh, uh, water recharge dams, uh, so that uh, we can not only store some water, uh, uh, but at the same time improve the aquifer level or the water level uh, in the groundwater. Demand side, water conservation strategies in major agriculture sector. Uh, unfortunately, in Pakistan, still we are using the flood irrigation system, uh, which is wasting almost 80% of the total water. And uh, very rarely we are practicing the modern techniques like drip irrigation, tunnel irrigation, uh, sprinkler irrigations, and things like that. So uh, the efficiency, the, the, uh, the uh, duty uh, and delta of the water, irrigation water is one of the lesser in the world. And we need to uh, conserve this water through modern techniques of irrigation and uh, agriculture. Uh, in the production of rice, cotton, and sugar cane uh, in the river, industry river basin uh, is highly inefficient, and you could see that a lot of water is wasted uh, during the cropping in the uh, uh, development season. More efficient irrigation system like sprinkler, drip, uh, closed conduit system, or tunnel system are required uh, by the irrigation departments and the agriculture departments. At the same time, the approaches of water metering and water rationing can also rationalize the demand of water for irrigation. Now, this is very interesting that uh, we just uh, authored a, um, one of our paper uh, and uh, it's published in the International Water Association Journal, that is water uh, theory and practice. Uh, and uh, it was a very interesting result that when we asked about the metering option from the people of Islamabad, they were happy uh, to just have the metering to control the water, but they were not happy to pay for the metered water. So even in Islamabad, the people believe that metering of water can uh, uh, should not be done uh, because if we meter the water, maybe we can charge high to those who are using the water in a large volume. But unfortunately, when the people in, in Islamabad are not ready for this option. Uh, another option in the changing climate scenario and subsequent uncertainty about the availability of water can be changing the land use patterns. Uh, we uh, concluded last year's study with the WWF to see that uh, what is happening to the land change and uh, land use and land cover in the HKH region, and we focused on three regions uh, in three places like Hunza and then uh, Nagar and uh, and Reza. and uh, and we could uh, see that. A lot of uh, agriculture and open uh, uh, land has been uh, converted to the belt land, and that is uh, something like half of the land has been uh, wasted. Uh, so this is uh, the 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 the, uh, the food basket. Unfortunately, is reducing in the sense that we are left with very little uh, ag agricultural land, arable land, uh, and uh, the land use is highly unsustainable in the HKH region. Concept in environmental flow must be taken into account. Environmental flow considers the water system in terms of quantity, time, and quality to maintain the surrounding environment system and human livelihood. This is the area I think uh, uh, where uh, I believe that artificial intelligence can play a very good role if we can automate uh, the whole uh, environmental flow system of water and uh, we can uh, install some sensor systems to tell us about the efficiency of water system. Uh, our uh, team of computer science are working on the water efficiency modeling uh, with the help of artificial intelligence. This is a project we are doing with the uh, with the HEC, and I have, I hope that we will be developing some models uh, to at least uh, rationally control the uh, water use. The climate water governance issues in Pakistan include river basin and watershed management, agriculture and irrigation management, urban and domestic water issues, floods, droughts, and disaster management, groundwater management, and transboundary management. Uh, I'll just give you two examples. Uh, uh, when we, for the first time, visited uh, uh, Quetta in uh, in uh, early uh, this century, or by end of last century, 20th century, uh, the water level uh, in the AIU campus, Alama Iqbal University campus area, which is on the uh, this uh, Taftan Bypass or uh, this uh, Busa Mandi, uh, it was something uh, around 800 feet down the uh, uh, ground level. 
Uh, when we visited uh, five years later, the ground level in the Quetta city is gone down to 1200, even more. In some areas, you could see that's 1500. So the water is becoming, the groundwater is going down and down in all parts of the country. In uh, Islamabad, when we started in uh, 1999, the shale boat pumps were available at uh, every depth of something like 70 to 75. But today, uh, even in all parts of the Islamabad, in general, we don't have the water lesser uh, at a level of 200 feet. And the, the, the boat pumps are now dug to the 250 feet even to have the sustainable uh, water level. And that is the area of high concern that we don't have the recharge of the water, uh, groundwater, and the groundwater is going down and down. There is no consensus-based regional governance framework for water in Kech region, uh, as I have already submitted, that the transboundary conflicts are one of the biggest impediments to develop this framework, and uh, that is, uh, again, very uh, unfortunate. With the increase in population in the urban and rural areas of HKH region, the existing spring water is becoming insufficient for the communities and in many towns, groundwater extracted through bores and pumping. In our study, we could see that in many places, the people have mixed the spring water with the Nala stream water or river water, and the quality of water has gone down uh, because they cannot meet the water from the existing springs. So that is another uh, problem happening in the HKH region that the quantity per capita is decreasing and the quality is also uh, worsening. This has lowered the aquifer and the absence of recharge ponds. The water level is going down. Even in Islamabad, unfortunately, there were a large uh, number of the recharge galleries in the uh, in this uh, 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 upper attitude of Marga Margala Hills and around this uh, facial mask. But unfortunately, in the last 30 years, all these uh, recharge galleries have been dumped and uh, the, water, the water is not recharged from the high precipitation of the city. The fast urbanization of the HKH region, together with changing climates, increase the population pressure of tourism and development activities are further jeopardizing the urban water supply. And this is the, uh, the one of the biggest challenge in Gilgit Baltistan also that all the major cities are facing severe problem of water availability and quality. Some of the important measures for creating urban water resilience include mapping water resources, assessment of water demand and supply with future projections, developing deeper understanding of recharge zones and their protection documentation of climate in these water uh, uses issues in the wake of increased population and urbanization. And these are some of the areas uh, where I think the uh, the earth scientists and the civil engineers and the, uh, the uh, uh, water engineers can work together uh, to develop uh, urban resilience uh, in uh, water resilience. Legislation and policy formulation about water conservation, protection of recharge zones, restriction of groundwater extraction and conservation of catchment areas will be required to create urban water resilience in the HKH region, which is becoming a big challenge now. Similarly, metric system for controlling wastage of water, gender conscious water sensitive policies, better coordination and strengthening the institutional capacity related to water supply and management is required in the region. To deal with the future water scarcity issues in the region, Due to climate change, it's recommended to bridge the water demand and supply by augmenting the supply uh, and racializing the demand side. The governance system of water supply across the region needs to be strengthened with the help of community involvement. And one of the uh, very good model in this region is WASIP model, which is Water and Sanitation Extension Program, uh, which was undertaken by the Khan Development Network with the GB government and they have given uh, clean water to about 600 villages in G GBC, uh, Gilgit, Baltistan, and Chitral region, and about 200,000 uh, people uh, have been uh, benefited from this, uh, uh, this uh, community managed system. And we are now trying to see under this project that how these uh, rural models can be upgraded and upscale to the urban settings. Final uh, slide, I think the time is also about to finish uh, for my talk. Uh, that we, we need to do three very important things. Uh, the first is the policy-driven impactful research. Uh, I think the research which we are doing for the years and years uh, in the higher education institutes of Pakistan has been mostly shelved now. We are uh, now uh, very much re required to focus our research to provide a policy guidelines to the governments 
and the governance planning and monitoring uh, and related intervention stakeholder involvement in communication of policies related to water. So that is the first very important area where the academia and researchers need to work together. The second is uh, inclusivity uh, that we need to include uh, the gender and the people with disabilities uh, our special abilities and other uh, segments of society. And this success story we could, we could see in the OASET projects in which uh, the community was the major stakeholder and even the projects which started 20 years back were very successfully providing the water to the uh, communities because they were owned by the community and they were working very well for its sustainability. So I think the engagement uh, of the uh, of the water projects with the society, with the gender inclusiveness is really very important. Uh, finally, the packaging of the research uh, that we should go for a thematic research uh, so that new research in the HKH, our upper indispensation region, region, uh, region uh, can communicate to the relevant stakeholders. Uh, and that's why we have divided the uh, the research at KIU in different about 12 or 15 teams. And under these thematic areas, we are mostly connecting these teams to the uh, sustainable development goals, 17 sustainable development goals. And these goals are then connected to the different themes and packages. And these packages are providing then some specific solutions to the stakeholders. Last few slides just to tell you uh, how this devastation has been made by the Shishpur Glacier. You can see uh, in the top picture uh, the inundation of the uh, the banks and uh, the Ibadat Khana, the worship place uh, of the Smiley community has been now made highly vulnerable and they have been restricted to go to the, it's a very, very beautiful building in Hunza, Karim uh, Alibad, but unfortunately this has been devastated. devastated the, uh, on the bottom you can see the bridge which has been taken away uh, uh, by the flood uh, the videos are very uh, commonly watched. Uh, so these are some of the videos how this uh, this this was the bridge constructed uh, during the construction of the Karakuram Highway, and uh, this very historic bridge has been taken away by this flood, uh, high debris flood. Uh, similarly, the road has been totally uh, totally damaged. The government, uh, the RB has is uh, installed a temporary bridge, uh, kind of Bailey bridge, uh, uh, which is used for the. Uh, transportation, but very limited capacity. Still, the people are facing high uh, level of problems in the commuting. These are some of the uh, buildings which have been uh, uh, the Ibadat Khan and things like that. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I think my time is over and for next uh, I, I've taken sorry five minutes more, but anyhow mm -hmm. uh, we can mm -hmm. uh, we can discuss a couple of comments. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was uh, a nice and very informative presentation. Uh, Banazi, can you kindly coordinate the questions, please? And questions, please. And comments. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, floor is open for our question. Uh, mm. We have a question from Salahuddin. Um, Javed, please, can you allow the, uh, all the participants to ask a question? Okay, uh, Salahuddin, you can ask your question now. You can unmute your uh, mic, please. And then you can ask your question. Deeply introduce yourself and then ask your question, please. I think Salahuddin Chab has already put his question in the dialogue box. And his question yeah. is that, is it a fact yeah. that there is not a well-established dedicated monitoring system? Uh, yes, uh, I think the existing monitoring system is very scattered and spaced. Uh, when we went into this uh, study, we could see that more than 20 agencies are working for the monitoring, but there is no coherent data available with all these agencies. So the first challenge is that how we can integrate this knowledge or this data into a useful knowledge about the forecasting of, for example, the uh, meteorological department is working here, the water resource research center is working here, KIV is working here, then a lot of international uh, researchers are working here from different parts of the country, but there is no coherent data 
which can be uh, relied in a way that with, that can be used for the forecasting of uh, any kind of uh, future scenario. What we are trying now to do is uh, that we are trying to develop a data repository of HKH region and in, uh, in, in KU. Uh, I have tasked this to my IT team and uh, what we would be trying to do that we bring all this data we try to validate that through some mechanism and then put that into uh, into data repository which can be accessed even if uh, you could see that even uh, during this uh, uh, this sheshpur uh, uh, flood there was no uh, very reliable forecasting available and this happened uh, all of a sudden no one was ready for this catastrophe and that is that also gives us the uh, the feeling that the data which we have is not very reliable and we cannot. The second problem uh, which I, when I talk in the HKH region is the transboundary problems because the HKH region is having uh, seven or nine countries and they have a lot of conflicts on the boundaries. So therefore the uh, availability of a reliable data uh, is not uh, possible if you cannot go into the uh, boundary and uh, we cannot even integrate uh, the research on different sites. So these are the two challenges. I don't know uh, how can we do that uh, uh, to sort it out, but certainly at Pakistan level in upper Unza, uh, upper uh, Indus Basin region, we need to integrate the integrate the available data. I think uh, we have a question from our, one of our organizers, Bob. Uh, Bob. You can ask your yeah. question. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Atala, uh, thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. And I just want to follow up on your, your comment it was a moment ago about the challenge of data integration. And my question is, as I look at the situation, I can appreciate that you have uh, many different countries involved, many different organizations involved, and I appreciate the challenge of organizing the information. My question really is, is there a possibility that the Karakoram International University could take a, a leadership role in data management, uh, perhaps in a, in a region that was say in the Gilgit Baltistan area, you might create some kind of an area that is of special interest uh, for your university. And it might be that you could create a data integration capacity in your own university and, and draw on the, the workers that are engaged in the area in your own area and pull that information together and thereby uh, creating a database that could be used for future planning. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. I think this is uh, one of the most important area where we need to work. Currently, we are working with UNDP uh, under the GLOF2 project. Uh, we have tomorrow the uh, the country head of the food and agriculture uh, uh, FO is coming here and uh, the World Bank, and they are starting a project under the name of Living Indus uh, or a Living Indus. And that is the uh, how to protect the Indus civilizations and water resources. Uh, one of our agenda point uh, during the discussion would be how a data repository can be established at Karakuram International University. We are already working with NDP for this project, and uh, there is a uh, there is a good funding available with them. But you know there is a there is a discussion uh, that whether it should be established at the Gilgit Baltistan government or at the KIU, uh, because normally you see the governments prefer that uh, that that they should have the funds uh, to spend. But our concern is uh, much more that instead of just funding uh, or spending the fund, more important is to have that repository available at the academic institutions, which can be uh, uh, periodically updated in a very uh, in a very uh, disciplined way. Because if this database is placed in, in a garment clutches, I'm afraid that that would just become a garment project and it will be wasted uh, with the course of time. So our arguments with the UNDP in the World Bank is that this data repository, they have allocated something like uh, 90 million or 100 million park rupees for this project. Our uh, our argument with them is that this should be established at Karakuram International University uh, and it should be the hub of uh, data for this HK region. Uh, and I think sometime in future they would decide, but certainly you are right 
that uh, uh, we are working in EC mode, uh, we are working in World Bank, Food and Agriculture Department, uh, and other departments of the region, Pakistan Meteorological Department. We are working with the Pakistan Council of Water Resource, uh, Dr. Ashraf, that how can this database can be established at the KIU. And uh, let me tell you that uh, PCRWR, uh, Dr. Ashraf has been very uh, kind enough uh, to establish a water corner in the library of the of the Karakoram University, a recently built a building. So that water corner is having more focus on the water resources of the region. So uh, I agree that uh, sometime in future we need to have a very robust database uh, here uh, for the uh, water resources and other aspects of the HKH regions. Dr. Kasim Jan Saab. Thank you. Uh, I have two comments and then one question. Uh, my one comment is that we all are talking about climate to be responsible for the lowering of per capita water availability in Pakistan. It is partially true, but not entirely. I think that all of us should talk very loudly that the population growth in Pakistan is so fast that even if there was no climate change, per capita resource of water would have dwindled to more or less the same level as it is at the moment. So this is something that we have to talk nationally, that unless we do something about the rapidly growing population, the resources would always be fixed and limited, and they would continue uh, reducing in uh, per capita share with passage of time. The second question that I, since you, uh, uh, you, you made a very nice presentation, I should have said that in the very beginning, but you are involved with the Pakistan Engineering Council, which has a lot of leverage with the government. So there is another issue that we need to talk about, and that is gradually in the mountain area, because of population growth, there is more and more agriculture activity. And therefore, more water is used now in the mountain areas and as a consequence, the lower riparian or the end users would obviously have slight lower share than they have had in the past. Therefore, this is something that when we are planning the future, we should consider that the, there would be ever increasing use of water in the mountain area because of growth of population and demand for food production. OK, having said these general things, uh, you said that uh, in the Hunza Valley, there are uh, studies which show that uh, um, there is a uh, there is glacial uh, uh, glacier recession. Uh, it may be so. I have no right to question these studies, but I would like to mention that there have been studies in, on the Chinese side of the Karakoram, for example, in the Shucks Gum Valley and around, and they still think that there isn't substantial decrease in the uh, in the um, snow coverage in those areas, the so-called Karakoram anomaly or whatever you wish to label it, but there is probably some sort of geographic uh, enigma that the right term or maybe more uh, that the that the Karakoram mountains, at least some parts, if not entirely, they are not showing as much recession as the glaciers are showing in uh, the rest of the Himalayas. Uh, the fact that there is glacier recession globally, there is a recession in the snow cover in the um, and there is tying of permafrost. There is no doubt about that, and I totally agree with you. But as far as Karakoram area is concerned, I think it needs a little more is to acting only on the northern side of the Karakoram or in the, or in the entire western part of the Karakoram region that the global warming is compensated, uh, to say, to use the wrong word, by uh, continued snow coming from the west release in the areas. Thank you, and my compliments once again, Professor Shah Sahib. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. I think the Karakoram anomaly, uh, it's very interesting uh, that uh, at one head, uh, the glacial lines are receding towards the masses. Uh, 
for certain elevations and then above that elevation we have again a high uh, uh, a high mass uh, addition. Now the challenge is not this that maybe the mass balance together is not receding or decreasing. That is that is that is uh, uh, not the question. The more important is that the glacier at the lower altitudes are becoming extinct. And these are the glaciers which are becoming the source of water melting. Because if you think about the uh, the Rakapushi peak, uh, and you say that the uh, the glacial mass is increasing, yes, the glacial mass might be increasing at the upper altitude and there are studies. Uh, but the main concern is that at the lower altitude, the glacial mass is continuously reducing. And we could see even in the last four years, the Pasu glacier line is going big uh, by a few kilometers in the Beafo and in the uh, Pasu in Batura and uh, even in uh, this uh, Shishpur and uh, Manochar, we could see that the uh, glacial line is receding. So the concern is not that the mass is decreasing. Maybe the mass is compensated and we already have this anomaly in the, in the beginning of this year, uh, this century. But the more important is that the lower altitude glaciers are becoming extant. And that is the problem where the Western Himalayas will be not having any glacier for the water availability in the lower altitude by 2050. And that is the matter of high concern for the people living in the Himalayan uh, basins. So I agree with you that the climate may be compensating the mass at higher altitude, but the more concern is that the lower altitude glaciers are becoming lesser and lesser in volumes and the glacial lakes are local. Thank you very much. Sorry, I think we have to mute all the participants. Okay. So thank you very much. I think uh, we can't or do we have some question or comment? Yes, yes. Yes, we have uh, another question from Matthias. I think um, yes. Yes. Unfortunately, I cannot open my camera, but first I would also say it was a very, very good summary of the overall situation. My comments are not very different from the ones we just heard by Bob and Kazim Jan. First of all, I would say um, climate change, of course, is very, very important. But even if we consider that climate will be stable, the same as it is now, most of the problems would exist and would increase. Uh, it, Kazim Jan mentioned it, increase of population, increase of needs, total change of the social structure, a decrease of quality. These are factors which are really um, very, very, very demanding. And that has not, not really something to do with climate change. But of course, climate change is an additional problem in one or the other direction. The second point, um, it was also mentioned, especially also by uh, Bob. Uh, I was, uh, as an international advisor at ICIMOD, we always promoted the Himalayan University Consortium. It mm -hmm. would be a chance, really, for the regional universities to submit relevant and useful uh, information. And there, I think uh, we are almost at the very beginning. For instance, there's many of the universities are really engaged, are they are working or so, but it's still totally uncoordinated. And this begins, and I will next week uh, talk a little bit about this, by such simple things like how do you measure climate uh, conditions? How do you measure rainfall? These are clear rules, but when you go to the area, you see there are totally different sensor systems. Uh, it's almost impossible really to uh, compare the uh, outcomes and so on. There we must really try to coordinate efforts and uh, the Himalayan University Consortium is certainly one of the real chances to do so. So um, 
I don't want to go uh, into further details. Maybe just Shishbar uh, Glacier, um, of course, that's a dramatic and very, very impressive event. I'm not sure whether it's climate change behind it. Uh, Shishbar Glacier is one of under totally different climate conditions. Uh, Shishbar Glacier's advance, for instance, 100, more than 100 years ago, 120 years ago, is well documented. It has been mapped those days. And then uh, in, it was around 1900 or even before, glacier advanced within two months or so, more than six kilometers, almost uh, to the bridge where, which has been uh, broken now. What I would like to say, we have to uh, develop a very differentiated view on all these um, uh, processes there. and not just say, well, it's climate change. There, we must be very careful. But one could go on now with uh, discussions and so on. I hope I have a chance next week to show a few of the examples which um, we should uh, work on. Thank you very much. And once more, a good, really good and convincing summary of the situation. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Professor Matthias. I think, uh, uh, we could see this high surge in the Shishper Glacier in uh, 1999 July, uh, 2019 July, when we visited uh, the Shishper Glacier is surged for 13 kilometers. And uh, beyond that, we could uh, even go to the uh, glacier to see that a big uh, glacial lake was formed as a result. Now, the problem yes. with this glacial lake uh, is that it is not visible with the normal tools, uh, even in the uh, drone, and uh, because it is covered with the snow, a thin layer, and you cannot uh, exactly see the uh, the exact depth of this uh, and the wet and depth uh, during the winters. And then in summer, uh, we have been part of the uh, prevention measures, our uh, retrofitting measures, but unfortunately, uh, this happened all of a sudden because the people were already on their eat leaves uh, and people were at their home and the Disaster uh, authority was also not very ready to because we were expecting as per our modeling that this cap can happen somewhere around the July or August. But uh, the sudden rise in temperature in Pakistan, in general, and in Gilgit Baltistan, very particular, you could see that the mean annual temperature of May has not never been beyond uh, 35 or 38 in mm. Pakistan and in this region. But in this May. This was unprecedented, maybe historical record of the. Now, the yeah. ground surface temperature, uh, mm -hmm. surface temperature also increased in Gilgit in the last couple of years. And even in Hunza, uh, sometimes we could see that you are having a very high uh, temperature in the Aliabad. So I think uh, these uh, together create, but I agree with uh, Professor Qasim Jan uh, that when IC mode uh, mapped the challenges, they say that climate change at the top, the disaster urbanization, population, uh, water quality, education, and livelihood. All these are the challenges together for the HKH region. Uh, and certainly a very holistic and integrated approach would be required to stop this, uh, this uh, water scarcity problem. It's not only the climate change, uh, which can be blamed. We, everybody, uh, for instance, not a single person in the city of Gilgit is ready to pay the tariff for the water. And now the tariff is 100 rupees per month. And the people are uh, going to the courts to stop the uh, schemes because they are not ready to uh, go for some contribution to develop their water resources. So this is one of the biggest challenge uh, that how the stakeholder can be made involved into this uh, water uh, conservation. Uh, certainly this would require a lot of integrated efforts. I think that's uh, all uh, from the audience. We don't have any other questions or comments. So on behalf of the organizers, I would really like to extend my thanks to the presenter, Professor Dr. Talasha. Do we have any uh, flyer for uh, the upcoming uh, talk, Benazir? Do you want to display any flyer? Um, no, sir, we will share uh, by today or tomorrow. In the next flight. Okay, so we'll, we'll see you on 
on coming Wednesday. Uh, everyone yeah. have a very good day ahead. Thank you very much for joining and bye. Uh, uh, we will sir. We, sir. we have a Thank good you. photo. We will have a good photo. Yeah. Good bye. Oh. Please, please turn on your cameras. Professor Mathias, we have to have a good group photo here. Sorry. <laughs>